Is it permissible to eat McDonald's because they stun the animal, then they kill the animal? Uh, that's not normally the question I'm asked about McDonald's. Uh, as for stunning the animal, because even some uh, Muslims stun animals, then the stunning of the animal is not permissible because it is cruelty. And you are not allowed to treat the animals with cruelty. So it's like taking an animal and hitting it in the head with a piece of wood and making it unconscious. And then you go to it and you slaughter its neck. Say Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and you slaughter. Like the Muslims, they slaughter. The act of hitting the animal in that manner is haram. Not allowed. Not allowed. Even to the point that Islam, Allah, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written perfection upon everything. So when you slaughter, slaughter well. Make sure your knife is sharpened well. To the extent that the scholars, they say, it is impermissible to slaughter an animal with a blunt knife. Haram. You have a knife, but it's blunt. To slaughter the animal with that is not permissible because that's cruelty. The scholars, they say, when a person commits a crime of murder, so in Islam, a murderer is executed, right? How is he executed? The majority of, of the ummah, they say that he's executed by beheading. Right? So a murderer is killed by beheading. Some of the ulama from them, Shaykh al-Fawzan, and also some of the scholars of the, of the Hanabila, they say that it is not permissible to execute a murderer with a blunt knife because it is cruelty. The man is a murderer. But they say, even for the murderer who was killed, yes, he will be executed because he's a murderer. He killed 10 people or raped women and killed them. So he's to be executed, but not with a blunt knife. Because of the hadith that Allah has written perfection upon every. When you slaughter, you slaughter well. Make sure the, sh the blade is sharp. So therefore, the stunning comes under that heading. That you stun the animal and this is an act of cruelty. And then you slaughter it afterwards. So we don't say that the meat is haram, but we say that that act that that person has done, it is haram, the act of cruelty. But we can't say the meat is haram because the animal is alive and the heart is beating. So when you slaughter, the slaughtering is halal. All right. So that uh, I hope explains that issue. But nevertheless, if you can avoid the stunned animals, avoid them. Eat non-stunned because they will all, this will only perpetuate their concept that you can carry on stunning. And we don't want them to stun. And the Jewish lobby and many of the Muslims in this country, they don't accept the stunning of the animals. And even though they're trying to put it into law across Europe and some countries, then we should avoid that. Barakallahu feekum. And if you can write to your... There's no harm if you were to write to the MP or the Department of Health. No harm. Say, I'm a Muslim. And I'm not happy that the animals are being stunned. I'm not happy with that. I'm a Muslim. And we do not see that there is any cruelty. And there is proof to show that there is not cruelty too. And it does not cause, because if you're going to slaughter an animal, those are the veins and the arteries that you cut. Because death is very quick. And the pain is minimal. So therefore, there is no harm if you were to write to your MP or whoever. There is no harm in that, Barakallahu Feekum, to explain that to them. <laughs> But as for McDonald's and the meat of Ahlul Kitab, then yes, I hold, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Qur'an, that the meat of the people of the book, the people who were given the book before you, then their meat is, their slaughtered meat is halal for you. Yes, we hold that, that's the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. اليوم أهل لكم الطيبات وتعام الذين أوتوا الكتاب حل لكم. That today Allah said, I have made for you the permissible all that is good. And the, and the food of the people of the book has been made lawful for you and your food has been made lawful for them. People of the book are who? Yahud and Nasara. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, anhuma, he said that this refers, that this refers to the slaughtered meat of the Jews and the Christians. That's what the Sahaba did. Abu Dhar, same. This is what they hold, that the meat of the Jews and Christians is allowed. Imam Zuhri rahimahullah ta'ala as Imam al-Bukhari has reported in his Sahih, with regard to the meat of the Jews and Christians, that it is halal. And he, and he took it from Ali radiallahu anhu. And the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
when the Prophet when she said, Ya Rasulullah, these people have just come to Islam new. I don't even know if they said Bismillah. She, he said, you say Bismillah and eat. So the origin is that if the meat comes from three people, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. If the meat comes from any of these three people, then we do not need to question it. We don't need to start phoning up Asda or Tesco. Or we don't need to phone. If it comes from a Muslim, if you go to a Muslim's house, he says, Yaqi, come tonight to my house for dinner. So he serves you a nice chicken curry. You say, Yaqi, is this halal chicken? Would you say that to your Muslim brother if he was to invite you, your cousin or your auntie? That's the last invite you're ever going to get. There's no questioning. You don't question them. They are Muslims, they will give you halal meat, inshallah. And if they didn't, that's between them and Allah. Prophet didn't say to Aisha, go and find out what they did. Aisha said to the Prophet, I don't know, Ya Rasulullah, they've just come to Islam. I don't know if they say, if they slaughter it correctly. I don't know, Ya Rasulullah, if they even said Bismillah. He didn't say, well, can you go and check before we carry on? He said, no, you say Bismillah and you eat. So he said to her, so this investigation and this following up, let's follow up and find out. No, this is not needed. Barakallahu feekum. However, if you know that in a particular land, that the majority of the people, that they are not Jews, nor Christians, nor Muslims. Like Sri Lanka. Like China. Then the origin is that you don't touch their meat. Their meat is haram. Why? Because the majority of the people of that land are neither Jew, nor Christian, nor Muslim. In Saudi Arabia, if you to go to any takeaway, you're going to ask them for the halal certificate. The man is there. Beard, Muslims, Salaam Alaikum, Kef Halak, what can I do for you, Akhi? I'll have a ch- but before that, can you just show me your certificate? You wouldn't do that in a Muslim, not in, not in Saudi, not in Egypt, not in Morocco, you wouldn't, because it's halal, they're Muslims, halal. Likewise, in a Christian land, if you were to go to Brazil, or the Caribbean, Christians, you can eat their, hal- their meat is halal for you, Allah made it halal in the Quran. Right? It is something in, in reality that, I find predominantly comes from the Indian subcontinent. Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, and Indians or Indian Muslims. They're very cautious of this affair to the point that they will not touch it. Say, this, yeah, it's haram. It's haram. Let's phone this one and phone that one and phone that one. Phone the, you know, phone the butcher, phone this butcher, phone Asda. Phone... This is not required. If that was going to happen, Prophet Hassan would have told Aisha. So this is why the scholars such as Ibn Baz, Ibn Thaymin, even from the Salaf, Abu Dhar, radiyallahu anhu, Abu Dhar, Sahabi. Someone came to Abu Dhar, hadith is uh, collected by Imam Tabari in his tafsir, I think she's authentic, inshallah, the author. And they said to him, we have some meat that was slaughtered in the name of the church of St. George, Georgius. Kanisa Ismuha Georgius. This is what they said to him. There's a Kanisa church, Ismuha Georgios. Its name is George. So it's St. George. And uh, can we eat their meat? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the meat of the Jews and the Christians, Ahlul Kitab, halal, and he knew their shirk. He knew their shirk. Are, 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 are Jews and Christians Muslims? Are they muwahidun? They're not people of Tawheed. Allah knew their shirk. The Jews and Christians, they say, Allah is three. The Christians, they say, Allah has a son. They worship Christ. So even alongside that, Allah made their meat halal. That's what Abu Dhar said. Then the scholars, they differ. If you know that they slaughtered in other than the name of Allah. Right? This is where even the Sahaba, you find different narrations of the Sahaba. If you know that they slaughtered in other than the name of Allah, is it allowed to eat or not eat? If you know that they slaughtered in the name of Jesus or George, St. George or St. Peter or whatever, then a group of the Salaf, they said, don't eat it. Why? Because they have slaughtered in other than the name of Allah. But those Christians who slaughter in the name of Allah, in the name of God, as they, as they say, then they say it is halal. So that difference does occur. But if you do not know, they are just Christians and they are Jews, and you do not know, and the news did not reach you. Then what's the origin? Halal or haram? Halal. You don't phone up the local abattoir and say, uh, did you mention George or 
Jesus or who did you mention? You don't have to do that. That's why those Salaf, they used to say, if you hear them, like Zuhri, if you hear them slaughtering it other than the name of Allah, then don't eat. Then don't eat. That was the opinion of some. As for others, like Abu Dhar, he said, when they asked him, they slaughtered in the name of the Kasina, is, uh, Kanisa Ismuha, Georgios. His name is George. He said, Allah permitted their food and he knew their shirk. So that ikhtilaf does occur. But in this country, they don't mention anything. Right? However, if they put a bolt in the head and kill, or they put a bullet in the heart and kill, then that is haram. That is dead meat. Dead meat from a Muslim, from a Jew, from a Christian is not allowed. The hunted meat is allowed. Hunting game, that is. But we don't really eat game in this country like, you know, you catch a pheasant or whatever. That's generally not done. Right? But if they are done by, if a Muslim, you know, carries out the hunting, hunts game in that manner by sending out a hunting dog, then the Muslim must say Bismillah before he sends him out. So that's a separate subject about game animals. But as far as cattle is concerned and chicken, animals that are kept, kept captive on farms, then it is allowed from the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims so long as you know that it is not dead meat. So how do you know if it's dead meat or not? You look at that which is, you know, overwhelming. The overwhelming ruling in this country or the overwhelming habit of this country is that they will slaughter at the neck by cutting the vein and the artery and they will allow the blood to leave the body completely. And what's the best way to do that? The jugular. Why? Because if you leave the blood in the body, what happens? Rots. A lot quicker. The decomposition is a lot quicker with the blood in the body. And also because of the various diseases that are prevalent in the cattle in, in the West. Because of their pumping them, uh, pumping them full with antibiotics and all types of other types of chemicals. So more pathogens are likely to remain in the body if the uh, blood is not drained. So they drain the blood. That's why when you go to a butcher of a Jew, Christian, Muslim, that you see it, it's free of blood because the blood is drained. So predominantly in this country, that's what they do. Right? That's what they predominantly do. Wallahu alam. Unless someone knows better, but that's what I know. And upon that, inshallah, we'll finish for today. Which is